In this video, we're doing another key comic book spotlight, this time on Wilson Fisk, Kingpin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we're doing another key comic book spotlight, this time on Kingpin. Now, if you guys are new to my channel or this series, what I typically do with these videos is take a notable superhero or supervillain and just point out five key comic books that the community often pursues when they're fans of this character. So in this video, we're gonna do Kingpin. But before I get into the books for today, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe, help support the channel, do one of those things, I would appreciate it. But let's get into the good stuff right now because we're talking about Wilson Fisk, Kingpin, and uh, this is going to be a good video. I mean, Kingpin is one of the awesome, uh, greatest street-level supervillain characters there is in all of Marvel comic books. A lot of excitement that Kingpin might be showing up uh, in the Hawkeye series or as soon as the Hawkeye series. Uh, you know, people thinking that Vincent D'Onofrio is going to, you know, make his way through the multiverse from the Netflix uh, world over to the MCU. And it'll be extremely exciting if that does take place. But we got to talk about his comic books today. And we got to start with my first pick, which is going to be Kingpin's first appearance, and that, of course, is Amazing Spider-Man number 50. Classic, classic cover, written in 1967. This, of course, was done by Stan Lee and John Romita Sr., and this is just an epic, epic book. And this is also just a great storyline. Of course, the cover isn't just awesome because it is a beautifully drawn cover. Uh, it also is representative of the storyline that happens in this book. Of course, what happens is Peter Parker, having a lot of doubts about being the Spider-Man character, decides to, quote-unquote, retire from that uh, the superhero life he you know he dramatically throws his suit uh, in a garbage can and as a result of spider-man no longer being around uh, the mob boss known as the kingpin emerges from the shadows and he kind of you know broods and let me just say kingpin I gotta say, pound for pound, is probably the best brooder when it comes to supervillains. I mean, Doctor Doom does some good brooding for sure, but I feel like Kingpin, you know, he's always, you know, in those high rises overlooking the city. I feel like he broods with the best of them. So anyways, Kingpin brooding now that Spider-Man is gone and he decides to launch his criminal empire onto the city uh, in a dramatic way for his first appearance. And of course, because it is his first appearance, this is not a cheap book by any stretch of the imagination. As we can see here, there is one sale back in May of 2020, uh, fair market value pricing this book at the 9.8 for $145,000. So a six figure book at the 9.8. And then down here at the bottom, you know, Go Collect has this listed at the sort of $400, $500 level at the low grade. And I would say that that's pretty accurate. Uh, when I go into eBay, you know, typically speaking, when you look for this book, you're gonna see it around the $500, $600 range or so. All right, let's go on now to my second pick here. My second pick is actually gonna be Amazing Spider-Man number 51. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the second full appearance of the Kingpin and also the Kingpin's first cover appearance, as you can see right there, him on the cover. And now I am someone who absolutely loves second appearances. I think second appearances are great, but in these key comic book spotlight videos, I don't always uh, bring them up as key books uh, to you know bring awareness to you guys because I feel like there's just other books that I typically wanna you know, point out. But this one right here uh, for Kingpin is something that I felt like was still a significant collector item because it gives you the value that this is the first cover appearance of the Kingpin. Of course, Amazing Sp uh, Spider-Man number 50, beautiful cover. But if we're talking about just owning a Kingpin thing, you know, you know how it is, like, especially if it, you guys are big slabbers out there, you're always going to want to look at the character. So uh, when that character is on the cover, it's always a beautiful thing. And this book right here has Kingpin on that cover. Now, of course, this one picks up with the storyline from the last issue, uh, Spider-Man takes back up the mantle of the Spider-Man superhero character, and he goes to you know enact vengeance on uh, Kingpin, who has now emerged in the shadows. And uh, this is when we get the first battle of Spider-Man and Kingpin. And Kingpin is no joke. I mean, we see him go toe to toe with Spider-Man, and we're we're seeing like you know for the very first time how badass of a villain Kingpin really is. So this is an awesome book for that reason. A beautiful cover, and definitely still very affordable and undervalued in my opinion. But as we dig into the numbers here, we'll see that there are, of course, 9.6s. Uh, fair market value for that being around the $13,000 range. There is no 9.8 on the census, which makes a lot of sense. Of course, this is a full black cover, so, you know, very hard to find these ones in perfect condition. And then down here at the bottom, you know, you won't necessarily see this book slabbed at the uh, 0.5 level grade, but typically speaking, when I go into eBay, it is possible to find this book, you know, around the $100, $115 range or so. 
All right, let's move on now to my third pick here. My third pick is actually going to be Daredevil number 170 from 1981, written and drawn by the legend Frank Miller. Now, this is a very, very awesome book. And in fact, this is actually a book that is actually doing a repeat of this com key comic book spotlight series. I actually pointed out this book in the Daredevil spotlight video. Now, what is the significance of this one? Well, this is the first time you would see Kingpin in the Daredevil title, you know, going up against the Daredevil. And I kind of feel like, you know, like peanut butter and jelly, uh, Wilson Fisk, Kingpin and Daredevil are just like, you know, a perfect match made together. I feel like, you know, seeing these two characters go up against each other is just, you know, so satisfying. It's just the perfect superhero, supervillain combo. And for that reason, I feel like this is a great book to own. Now, one of the other cool things about this book is that this is actually the first time that you would get Kingpin in name uh, referred to as Wilson Fisk. So it definitely has that significance as well. And again, Frank Miller on this series is just doing incredible work. I mean, he, he brings such like a, a darkness to the Hell's Kitchen universe. Uh, I love some of the panels in this where we see Kingpin training with like a bunch of, you know, ninjas and he's just totally mopping the floor with them, uh, you know, just, just showing how much of a badass that Kingpin really is. And it's just really awesome to see him, you know, always scheming, always plotting, uh, just doing what Kingpin does and, you know, uh, blowing up, you know, airplanes and things like that. So uh, definitely, definitely an awesome book setting up this rivalry between these two characters for many years to come. And as we dig into the numbers here, we'll see that there are 9.8 selling fair market value around the $220 range. So very, very affordable for, you know, a 9.8 book, uh, definitely. And then down here at the bottom, of course, 1981 book, you're not going to see it's lab too often, but when you go into eBay, you can find this thing around the, you know, 20, 25, $30 range or so. All right, let's go on now to my fourth pick here. My fourth pick is actually going to be Daredevil number 227 from 1986, written by Frank Miller and drawn by David Mazzuccelli. Now, what is the significance of this? Well, there's a few things here. This is the start of a storyline known as Born Again that would occur between number 227 and 230 or so. And of course, this would be a plot that features the Kingpin going up against Daredevil. And what made this storyline so epic is that this is when Wilson Fisk discovers that the identity of Daredevil is Matt Murdock. And, you know, boy, oh boy, this is just like quintessential kingpin right here. This is easily the best kingpin storyline there is in comic books, in my opinion. I think that that is generally agreed upon, you know, especially when I do like research of other people who think of, you know, awesome sto uh, kingpin storylines. This one is right up there with the, the best of them. And this is just an epic book. I mean, this is like, you know, if you're a fan of the Vincent D'Onofrio version of kingpin in the Netflix series, I feel like this storyline here, uh, like really truly embodies uh, that type of kingpin, you know, the, the very cruel, scary, terrifying, uh, you know, uh, methodical plotting kingpin. You know, this is when, you know, he finds out the identity of Matt Murdock and he just goes on a rampage. You know, he, he kills family members, you know, he, he just, just does super dark, dark things to the Daredevil character in order to just utterly destroy him on all fronts. And so for that reason, I feel like this is an epic book to, to have. The art is really cool in this one. Uh, it's a very film noir. It just works well with the Hell's Kitchen aesthetic. And so Daredevil 227, one of my favorite all-time Kingpin storylines there is in all of comic books. And as we dig into the numbers here, you'll see this is a very affordable book. This is not necessarily known as a super key in any kind of way, but I think it's an awesome collector's book. Uh, here we see the 9.8 selling around the you know fair market value around the $120 range. So definitely, definitely great um, on that front. And then down here at the bottom, you know, you won't of course see this book slab. It's a 1986 book. But when I go into eBay, you can find this thing around the $15 or $20 range or so. All right, let's go on now to my last pick here. My last pick is actually going to be Kingpin number one from 2003, written by Bruce Jones and drawn by Asad Ribic. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is the first solo series featuring the Kingpin. There you see Kingpin right there on the title. This would be the first time you would see that name in the title. And this is just a very, very cool mini series. His first solo series, uh, this would explore the origin of Kingpin. So you could kind of uh, constitute this book as being the origin of Kingpin as well. You know, we see the uh, how Kingpin was able to rise to power, how he started his criminal empire. It revisits that amazing Spider-Man 50 and 51 issues when Spider-Man and Kingpin first met. And this is a very cool book for that reason. One of the only times you would get a Kingpin solo story.
And of course, as you can see from the cover, you know, a very, very interesting art style. Uh, the interior art is also very interesting. A very cool read, very dark, and great to follow the Kingpin storyline from his point of view. And as we dig into the numbers here, we'll see that there actually is a few sales on Go Collect, but we don't have the prices available. This is not a book that is typically slab and not a very expensive book either. When you go onto eBay, you can find this thing easily around the five, 10, $15 range or so. Well, that is all I have for this video. Those are my five picks for Kingpin Key Comic Spotlight. Let me know what you guys think. I think Kingpin is one of the great Marvel supervillain characters, especially at that street level. You know, we definitely need a Kingpin in the MCU. It, 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 I think the MCU would heavily benefit from having a street level supervillain that can be one that is, you know, persistent throughout, you know, many, many movies and shows, etc. cetera. Uh, I definitely think Kingpin uh, needs to be in the MCU. It would be great to see Vincent D'Onofrio's version of Kingpin uh, make his way over. Let me know what you guys think. Did you guys like Vincent D'Onofrio's portrayal of the Kingpin? Let me know if there's other Kingpin books that you guys like to collect. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I will see you in the next video.